Hello, this is the ABET uh, five minute video for the uh, Engineering Accreditation Commission for ABET. This is the senior design uh, for the EE497 class. And what I'm presenting is Haley's Hand version 3.0. It is a low, low cost prosthetic hand solution. And um, it is part of the Haley's Hand project. So this is version three. It's an improvement upon the previous version. And here we go. So, as we know today, the price of the prosthetic hand on the market is upwards of $3,000. And the Bibionic for prosthetic hand, for example, released in 2010 is upwards of uh, $11,000. Well, these costs are beyond the immediate uh, reach of the typical consumer on the market. And as costs grow, the prosthetic must be modified as the patient develops. So, let's see. It has multiple grip patterns and is and it is the most advanced prosthetic on the market. However, as stated earlier, it is it is out of reach. So what, what we are proposing is a prosthetic based on 3D printing technology which has come onto its own and is the go-to technology when deciding the custom-made prosthetics. Uh, for example, there's an open hand project called uh, well, the Open Hand Project made by the Enable community, and it has open source solutions for building and printing 3D hands. But they are limited in movement and are very clunky to use by a child. So our proposed design is small and will use NinjaFlex uh, joints as a filament to between the phalanges. And for the response of the circuit, we are going to use an Atmega32 Mu4 integrated circuit. Later on, I will will explain why why we chose this. And let's see, it is low cost. It has a price below three hundred dollars as of November, and the price has stayed at, at the same. There we go. And the great thing about three D printing here, three D printed prosthetic, is that it is it allows the user to modify. Uh, as as they grow. So system overview for the MyOR circuit. No, sorry. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use the input from a myoelectric sensor placed on the user's arm. The sensor then goes to the Atmega microcontroller, and from the Atmega microcontroller, it sends it to the respective motors, as you can see on the sides, and. The stepper motors themselves are going to be inside the palm and are going to be connected to the microcontroller at the top of the palm. And following that, inside each one of the finger is a monofilament that is going to wind around the, the shaft of each one of the motors. They will have at least um, 2.4, 2.3 uh, nanonewtons of force and that's exactly what we're looking for it has two modes of operation and one it starts with pinch and fist however the geometries are almost infinite but for the starting modes as for to test operations we're going to do a pinch and a fist so the choice for the micro stepper motors that we made is based on the calculations that we had on the constraints that we were presented by budget size and the minimum torque minimum torque for a child is approximately five newtons however we don't have uh, those types of motors and looking at um, the size and the budget constraints we were going to get some bulky motors with uh, at a high price so we settled on six Knight Exanio motors, as you can see at the top in the figure, and they they only have 2.047 newtons of force. However, we did go around uh, to find a solution for this, and the solution was increasing the winding of the monofilament. So the number of winds allowed more torque, and it decreased the response of of the hand itself. So instead of 
closing in the matter of a few seconds, no, a few milliseconds, it actually closes in about three seconds, which is not that fast for a hand, but um, is it, it's, it's pretty good. So the electrical design overview. We used a TB6612 FMG motor from Sparkfun, and it, it accepts PWM signals, sorry, PWM, um, the, the, the graphic is wrong, the TB6612 FNG board, driver board, that accepts PWM signals with an optimum load of 1.2 amps per motor. And on the, the, it is receiving the commands from the Atmega32 Mu, and the reason why we chose this is because it has a 32 to to 96 megahertz clock cycle. We will be focusing on the latter. And it is a CMOS 8 bit microcontroller. It is a fast response circuit. But the important thing is that we are we can put very large programs on this on this microcontroller and I am pretty sure that we we will be able to make a succinct program that will test each one of the components of the motors and each one of the fingers. So this is these two diagrams here that we see. Uh, the first one, the top one, the big one is the Admega 32 mu microcontroller. Well, the, those are all the pin connections that you can see to the right of the side. Uh, the PWM outputs are, are shown. Each one, uh, as you can see, it's uh, two at the moment. No, actually three, because each one of those pin connections are connected to three motor drivers. And each motor driver is able to connect to two motors themselves. The total of number of motors is going to be six motors, one per finger and two for the thumb. So it has two axes of rotation. And on the bottom right hand corner, you can see the boards, the board connections that we're going to use for the driver. For as connecting to the motors themselves, it is a simple pin connection, P, P, just with simple junctures, um, jumpers, I mean, and there's there's really not much to it. It's just just plug and check, just follow along. All right. So the systems integration and test program flow. The main objective here is to test the functionality of the hand. And what we want to do is we want to test each finger individually. So we want to first initialize the motors and then drive the motors. Initialization is starts by ca uh, calling the driver, the specific driver from the microcontroller to the driver, and initializing by sending a pulse signal, a pulse PWM, just to check that it's fine. And then we drive the motors based on the program flow you see on the left. The, the input from the myelectric uh, sensor is then uh, accepted and based on the threshold value we calibrate the motor to 0 degrees, 90 degrees or 45, I mean 0, 45 or 90 degrees based in relation to the shaft. And we will have six functions, each one per microcontroller, I mean per finger. Now to drive the the um, the PWM signal, we had to calculate the duty cycle and the frequency that we desired. Because we were we're operating at 500 pulses per second, um, we had to calculate the OCR register value that we had to send in. And th these are the equations that we used: equation one, equation two. And we came out with a duty cycle of 18 percent. And in and a register value of d41 in hexadecimal. Let's see, however, these 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 values aren't set in stone. We do have to do calibration based on the finger position as soon as we set up the the design. And apart from that, we do need to do the frequency based response depending on how fast or how slow the machine is. I mean the devices. So management plans and conclusions. 
So the first thing we have to do is that we have to assemble the, the this device. As soon as we assemble it, we do have um, to contend with distortion issues from the myelectric input, as we, we we need to train ourselves in how to use the myelectric sensor and to, to get the responses that we want. We also need to do a test with the user of the device, so we need to do adjustments based on their advisement, based on what, what they want to do. And another thing that we have to keep out, um, keep a watch for is keeping the costs low. We have to maintain that uh, the stepper motors have to be at a low cost and the torque that we want uh, has to be compromised a little bit based on the prices that we are going to, to find. It is going to be a challenge, but uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that we are, will be able to do. And this is the build, build materials, exactly everything that we had to um, gather. And hopefully we can keep this cost low. At the moment, the total price is $120 plus change. And we're very confident that we'll be able to maintain this cost low. So it is acceptable and um, accessible to the mass user market. And that concludes this presentation for the accreditation uh, board of engineering uh, from Freibet. And uh, this has been a presentation from uh, Yusin Michelal Barrosales uh, with work and um, figures from both my uh, design and from James Malini and his design with my partner. So thank you very much.